Can we say amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I got a, uh, you know, I'll use that time to keep this down here because I'm a preacher, a Pentecostal preacher, actually. I get a little filled with the Holy Ghost sometimes. Is that all right? Come on. Amen. I'm just going to tell you about God. I'm going to start a series today. I haven't done a series for a while, so she wants me to do this so they can hear me in the nursery, I guess. But, uh, so, you know. <laughs> Amen. How many of you, know, I'll tell you something, I love Sundays, I don't know about you, how many are ready for the fall? Ready for the fall? Amen. Pumpkin spice, anybody ever had pumpkin spice? My wife likes that, amen. We go to Starbucks, amen, there's another pumpkin spice. Turn to your neighbor and say, I like pumpkin spice, we like it, it's how many people. Show of hands, how many people like pumpkin spice? Praise the Lord, look like a lot of you, amen, hallelujah. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. And, and, and I'll tell you something. It's great to be in the house of God. But I, as we get going, I want to explain the title. Because the title of what I'm going to be speaking about is the word I used to. I used to. And so as we get going, I want to explain this. Because we hear people all the time say, well, I, I used to do that until I had back surgery. Anybody ever heard that one? I've been around a while. Amen. I used to do that until I had back surgery. I, I used to do that when I was in, back in my school days. Anybody ever heard that one? Some of you are still in school. I, I, I've heard this one. I used to walk five miles uphill, amen, hallelujah, to get to school. All the used tos. I used to. I lived in Colorado when I was a kid. I remember walking in the snow, amen. It was freezing. And we walked to, uh, I lived in Thornton, Colorado, with the Thornton High School. And, and I'd walk in the snow and it was cold, I tell you. But, uh, you know, you just need to dress for the occasion. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And so during this series, I want to focus on some things. And I believe that uh, that a lot of us, we have, we all have used tos. Anybody have a used tos? Yes. Amen. Amen. And so this series, we're going to focus on some spiritual things about Christianity, about community, about belonging, about the call of God on all our lives. And the, the thing is that we need to understand that, that we need to get back uh, uh, to where I still do. Not that I used to, but I still do. Can somebody say amen? amen? So I want to talk about prayer this morning because I know personally in my own life, prayer sometimes, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes prayer is a struggle. We do a lot of praying around here, but i tell you something. Sometimes you got to wrestle with the Spirit, amen. you got to press through in prayer. Can somebody say amen? amen? And so I don't know about you, but many of us, I believe, if we were honest, we need a boost in our prayer life. And so, and one of the things that I thought about as I begin to put this message together is there will always be distractions to bid us away from getting a hold uh, and, and God getting our attention and getting a hold of God. Now, maybe uh, you're here today and you, uh, some people actually feel unworthy. They're unexcited about prayer and, and, and because they're not prayer warriors. But can I tell you something? Everybody in this church that is a believer of Jesus Christ you need to have a prayer life. And so why is it that we pray? Why is it so hard for believers to have to press through? Why is it tough for us to have to pray? I believe it really is because it is a spiritual discipline that we have to carve out space and time for. Now, I'm not just saying that you have a specific area of time, but uh, many people today live a life for, that is just encumbered by so many different things. Amen. That you're living life in the fast lane. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I commuted for 32 years down to Los Angeles. Amen. And I think God, I'm not doing it anymore. But my wife used to make a, a, a good act, a, a accusation to me. She'd say, why don't you pray on your way? I pray on you. You can't close your eyes when you're driving, but you can still pray. How many know it's not about how you're standing, where, what you're doing. You can walk and pray. It's not about your posture. You can get a hold of God. Amen. Down on your knees. Amen. You can be walking along just in movement, and the Holy Spirit will drop something in your spirit. Amen. It's not necessarily about our posture on how we're praying, but it's that we have the mind of God and get the heart of God and do have a prayer life. Amen. So let me give you a few ideas today that, that may help us and, in our prayer life. And number one, how many have ever heard this one? Well, I'm not really sure how to do it. Huh? How do you approach it? How, how do you begin? I, I've even said that probably over the years. I grew up in church, but, but you know, what, what is it that will indeed bring my prayer life a little deeper? 
Another one I heard is number two is the word bored. But what, if you, you know what? If you really get a hold of God, you can really begin to pray and develop a prayer life. You'll be anything but bored. I mean, if you're doing the things that God has called you to do, amen, you won't be bored. And so, but there are things that try to distract us. And, and for, how many of you have ever been praying and a few minutes later, something distracts you? Yep. Yeah. And you really try to get into to prayer, but there are distractions or other things that are going on or things that you want to do. And so, can I say there will always be something to try to distract us from prayer? Number three is we think our requests are too small. Anybody ever thought that? Man, I don't really have a whole lot to pray over. Man, God has bigger fish to fry. Amen. Uh, there's world hunger. There's a, what they call this uh, storm that's going on right now that went through the Bahamas. And then we need to pray for them. And on the East Coast, my little brother lives up in Car the Carolinas and Florida. And, and, and we see things like that. And we think sometimes, well, my, my, my little prayer, the little thing I have, there's not too a whole lot, Lord. So, but let me tell you something. God, uh, he sees even the little things. And he wants us to pray. And so God wants us to, to deal. And you know, a lot of times what it is is God sees the bigger picture and we see the little picture. God sees the, the big picture and we see the little picture. God sees things that we don't see. And so, and so yeah, there are world hunger, there are things that are going on, but God knows everything about you. And you are vitally important to God. Number four is I'm not sure if prayer is making a difference. Anybody ever do that one? I'm not sure if God's not really, if, if my praying is, is making a difference at all. Now, is there some way that you might say that I can activate my prayer and, and, and see things happen? Number five is because of decisions. Now, this is, I've heard a lot of times in counseling with people. It's because of the decisions I've made in my past. I don't deserve God to change my life. I feel unworthy. Say amen. amen. And so I want to define prayer for a moment and ask you, what is prayer? Simple prayer, absolutely, Billy, is communicating with God. Now the thing exciting about prayer is that it's a two-way conversation. It's a two-way relationship. So communication isn't just one way, but it is you and I communicating with God. And let me tell you this, God wants to hear your voice. Amen. And how many know sometimes God isn't like, this is God. Do you hear me? God sometimes has a little whisper. And he's seeing if you're listening. He's speaking into your ear. He wants to hear from you. And he wants to hear an honest reflection, an authentic gut cry of honesty to come out of you and say, God, this is me. This is what I'm dealing with. And would you help me? Can somebody say amen? Yes. amen. Now you might say, how do I communicate with God? Let me tell you something. Prayer isn't about how eloquent you are. It's not about your great vocabulary, although that's okay. But it's about positioning your life in an area of posture where God begins to speak to your heart, even many times while you're in the motion of life. Maybe you're here today and you're thinking, well, you know, I already know about prayer. I should have came next Sunday. Well, you know what? Stay here because God has something to show you. He always does. Let me say this. Prayer begins... With gut level honesty. Prayer begins with gut level honesty. We've been doing a lot of praying around here lately. We have prayer every Saturday morning. I come here from 8 to 9 and we pray. Uh, every Wednesday, every month, the first Wednesday out of the month, we pray. On Tuesdays, and I don't know if it's every other Tuesday or, or, or once a month, we pray. We have prayer going on all the time. But let me tell you something. You can pray. You can be the, in the attitude of prayer pretty much all the time. So prayer begins, begins with a gut level honesty. And, and, and you mean, what do you mean by that? Well, for a minute, just think about Moses. Moses led the great nation of Israel... And he had a gut-level, honest moment with the Lord. Go to the book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. And I'm reading out the New King James today, so just listen up to what we have to say today in the Word of God. 
So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak, to, to, to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people, and neither have you delivered your people at all. Anybody ever had a complaint with God? Yeah. Moses is saying, Lord, what are you doing? I think it's important for us to get this because, can I tell you something? God's not afraid of your questions this morning. God's not afraid of your questions. He's not afraid of your doubt because there's a big drastic difference between doubt and unbelief. Doubt says, you know what, I don't understand what you're doing, God. I have a few questions. I'm not sure about how to go about this. And then the other thought is, you know, unbelief is really the refusal to believe God. And so we need to believe God. Can somebody say amen? We need to hear from God. And so unbelief is, you know what, I refuse to believe. Amen. But when you have a, a, a gut level and you have a little doubt, it's just saying, God, I don't quite understand where you're going with this. Anybody ever do that? God doesn't mind you asking God, God, you know, I have a gut level honesty. I want to know, Lord, where am I going? What is happening in my life? Why is this happening to me? And God says, that's okay. That's okay. Some of you have found yourself in doubt today. You feel lost, you feel shipwrecked, you, you're asking the Lord just like Moses did. And Moses went to God with a gut level honesty. And he said, Lord, what is happening? I don't understand. But God allows us to ask those kind of questions because God is with us, amen. And he wants you to be gut level honest with him. Amen. Jesus speaks about the wrong type of prayer. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 5. The Bible says that when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners of the streets, and they, they may be seen of men, and assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse 7 of Matthew 6 says that when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard by their many words. Now, you know what? I hear people that pray a while, but maybe they pray a little bit longer than normal. But if it's a gut level prayer, that's all right. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus makes a point here, a couple of points that I think that we can draw from this scripture. And Jesus is bringing correction about prayer in a few places. And it's the only place where he brings correction to prayer. At first he says, when you pray, it doesn't matter how long you pray, as long as you are reaching out to me in a gut level honesty. So basically he's saying, don't show off in your prayer. Look at me. But it is authentic. And secondly, and he's talking about a non-authentic prayer that's not from the heart, is that, you know, I, that Jesus does not want. Jesus is saying there are many ways to pray, and I'm sure of this, but we need to, uh, that needs to come from the heart. And then God is listening to us when we come to him with a gut devil honesty. I mean, I, I've had times where I didn't know what to do. I just got down off my knees and I said, Oh, God. Anybody ever done that? Oh, God. You just begin to cry out to God. Oh, God. And you just begin to, make it, begin to speak in your heavenly language. And the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And the next thing you know, amen, God is translating with you, amen. There it is a talk. It is a communication between you and God. And something that happens, amen. And when you get up, you know definitely in your spirit that God has just done a miracle in your life. And you believe God for it. God, God is evil. So pray, folks. You should be praying about everything that matters to you. What is it that you're going through? You say, I don't know what to pray. I, I, I don't know what to pray. How? Listen. What matters to you? You maybe you had a fight with your wife and you pray about it. Amen. Oh, well, you fell out and you skinned your knee. Pray about it. Amen. Maybe you had an issue at work. Pray about it. Everything that matters to you is what you can pray about. 
You know, this teaches our kids that prayer is important. Maybe they had a fight on the playground, and you tell your child, you know what, pray about it. See, the fact is, everything matters to God that matters to you, and you can pray about it. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, say the word everything, everything. by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. We are told not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. So if it's something that matters to you, bring it to God. There's many examples in the Bible that are incredible examples of a variety of people that cared about uh, what they brought to God. Zechariah prayed for a son. Solomon prayed for wisdom. Moses and Samson prayed for water. That's a pretty good, uh, uh, honest, honesty. Amen. I need water. Anybody know we need water? That's a practical prayer. Daniel had a weird dream and said, Lord, I don't know how to interpret it. Can you help me uh, to understand this dream? Gideon was chosen to be a leader. And Gideon was afraid. And, 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 and he said, Lord, will you show me a sign? Anybody ever said, Lord, show me a sign? Amen. Abraham's servant went out to get a wife for him, him, uh, Abraham's son Isaac. And he said, Lord, lead me to the right woman to pray to this young man. Can you say amen? I mean, what a prayer. Amen. A specific prayer. Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain. And then he prayed, Lord, bring rain and it rained. Can somebody say amen? Paul prayed for the thorn to be taken out of his flesh. Amen. He was suffering three different times. The disciples prayed for boldness. Jesus prayed that God would make us one like he and the Father are one. Amen. How many know God wants us to be one in him? So that's just a picture of the variety of things that we can be prayed out. All these things concern God. The things that matter to you matter to God. Amen. Maybe you're going through a stress, stress level. And I want to tell you something. God wants you to know today, amen, if you're stressed out over something, amen, that God is right there with you. I heard one preacher, preacher say this, me and God are in it together. He's with me. So that's a picture that we can pray and God cares. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. What a sweet portion of scripture. Casting all, all, somebody say that, casting all your cares upon God because he cares for you. I mean, you think about this. There is no reason why we can't go to God in prayer. Why? Because He cares for you. So whatever you've learned in your past or whatever you go through in your mind, amen, yes, God is mighty. Yes, God is strong. Yes, God is righteous. Yes, God is the creator of the universe. But He cares for you individually. Amen. He cares for you. That's why we have access to Him. Access to him because He cares for you. Amen. Hallelujah. When I talk to my wife, amen, she hears what I say. I, I go out to eat, and it's really starting to bother me with these cell phones. You see families that are out to eat. You would think back in when I grew up, it was a time of conversation. It was around the table. And now you see people out in restaurants, and they're all on their phone, communicating with a phone. They can't talk back. So I did start to do as I, 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 I set it down. And because I want to have a communicate, we took my wife out to dinner last night. We went to Buffalo Wild Wings. Anybody ever been there? We had them chicken wings. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. <laughs> I tried that new Nashville sauce. She likes his chicken zinc. And we're eating away, amen. We had chicken, we had everything. We prayed, we, we, we got a hold of God, we fellowship. And you know what I did? I said, heck with brand new phone. I just got it. I put it over here and I said, I'm going to have a communication with God. See, prayer is much like that. Get rid of the distractions. And there are many different ways that we could pray. One way is that we should pray continually. Prayer isn't something we only do on Sunday, although we do it on Sunday, but prayer is something that can be
become a part of our life, that flows out of our life. It's like breathing the air, my wife said the other day, that you're inviting God into every aspect of your life. And that there's a place for your life you, that you can invite God in through prayer. So if you're dealing with troubles today, you can invite God in. If you're going through something today, you can invite God in. God wants to be in your life. He wants to transform your life. He wants to revive your life. He wants to heal your life. Amen. And you can invite God into your life with a, even your relational problems. If you're going through relational issues with people, amen, it is a thing that you can lay down before God. How many ever have relational issues? Let's just be honest. Amen. Me and my wife have been married over 30 years. And she's still trying to figure me out. <laughs> I always joke about I'm Irish. You put an Irish and a Spaniard in the same pot, it's like putting two hot chili peppers in the same pot. <laughs> Can I tell you something? God is concerned about you. He wants a relationship with you. He cares, the Bible says, about you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. And so it is God's will in Christ that we pray. You have, how many have ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth? He said these words. He says, I never pray over 20 minutes, but I never go over 20 minutes without prayer. So he's saying I have an attitude of prayer that it's going on all the time. So this is a consistent, ongoing attitude of prayer that I'm talking about today. It's not about praying every minute and having long hours of prayer, but it's about walking with God and consistency in prayer. It's about having a lifestyle, a gut level honesty of prayer, and it becomes a part of our lives. Can somebody say amen? I'll tell you, there have been times when I just get down on my knees, and it's not always on my knees. We're in here praying. I get down on bad knees, but I still get down on my knees anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll be patient around here, and I'll be praying. We'll be laying hands on every chair and praying God to just bring people in. Amen. We're back in the room praying. Amen. Maybe you have a prayer closet. Amen. You have a place that you set aside where you go pray. I'm going to tell you something, folks, but we need to pray. We need to get the mind of God and pray. We need to hear from God. And can I tell you something? It's a two-way conversation. God talks back. Amen. Sometimes you may hear, but you need to listen. It's a little whisper in your ear. And he says, you know what? I need to drop something in your spirit while you're praying. Man. It's a wonderful thing. Prayer is honest. Be honest with God. And it's simply getting a hold of God. We talk about prayer. It's really simple, folks. To pray about everything that matters to you. Prayer can be targeted specifically for specific things. And that maybe that's what you need to do in your life. Look at Matthew chapter 20, verse 29. Maybe there's things that you need to specifically go to God about. Now as they went out to Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the road. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. Anybody ever said that? Oh God, have mercy on me. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. You know what? I, I, when you tell me to be quiet, I have a need. Amen. I'm not going to be quiet. Amen. I know God. I, I, hey, God. Hey, I'm over here. God, right? You know, he, he, hey, come on, somebody. Amen. You're trying to get God's attention. Amen. You have a desperate need. There's something that you want. Then the multitude warned them, shut up, be quiet. You know, I'll cry out. But they cried out all the more. Saying, so have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus uh, stood there and he called them and said, how many know we want to get his attention in prayer? Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood and called them and listen to this. He said, what do you want? Be a do for you. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. They got Jesus' attention. And they said, Lord, our eyes that they may be opened. So Jesus had compassion to touch their eyes. And immediately they received sight. 
and they followed him. Amen. See, so many times we ask God for some of it. We're not specific, but not all of it. So when Jesus wants to hear from us, he wants to hear from you. Why? So his name can be glorified. Amen. That he, that he may be glorified. He wants to touch you. He wants to change your life. But he wants you to be specifically honest about what you need. The two blind men said, we are blind. We want to see. And he healed them. James 4, 2 says, you have not because you ask not. I hear people all the time, but Pastor, God didn't do anything for me. You know my first question? How's your prayer life? You said it. How's your prayer life? When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you communicated with God? You have not because you asked not. I believe, folks, we need to have a concerted effort in our prayer. We have this thing in October. There's going to be a car club here. But cars out there, you're going to have that, that trick or, trunk or treat night. We're going to try to reach people. Amen. Get them off, off the ghost and goblins and get them into Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Yeah. And we're going to have them come in here. One year we had over 500 kids. We did a little farmhouse thing in here. Amen. Over here, this just go had a haunted house and we got them saved over here. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> over 500 kids. Amen. So, so I'll tell you, folks, we need to be ready. And I really believe we need to have a concerted, concerted prayer over the events that are coming up as well. Yes, amen. Pray God uses that, out, that outreach in our community, that we see souls saved, that we see people come in to the Community Christian Center, that they can link hearts with us, that they can become a part of our church and take ownership and say, this is my home, amen, and I'm ready to serve and get involved. And somebody say amen. Let me ask you this. Uh, now, I know that many have had unanswered prayers. How many have had unanswered prayers? How many say, you know what, I, I, I've had unanswered prayers, but, and, and you would say, it's still a mystery to me. Amen. But you know what, I still can't understand why my prayer wasn't answered. That ever happened? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why God hasn't answered my prayer. Can I tell you something? You are not alone. There are a lot of people that have that have that difficult mystery of unanswered prayer. I'm, I'm getting almost done. See, there are many people in the Bible that prayed that their prayers were answered. Moses prayed that he wanted to enter the promised land, and God said no. King David had a sick son, and he prayed, Lord, heal my son, but his son died. Moses, Job, and Jonah, and Elijah prayed that God would kill them. And God said, I'm not going to kill you. I still got I, I some, some things for you to do. Amen. The Israelites prayed for victory, but yet they were defeated. Jeremiah prayed for Jerusalem, but yet it was destroyed. Paul prayed for the thorn to be taken out of his flesh three different times, and it was not removed. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul, in your weakness, I am made strong. How many understand that sometimes God will allow things to be there, and it won't be answered because God has shown you just how strong he is. Amen. And while you're thinking like, Paul, God, take God is saying, Paul, listen, amen, I'm not going to do it. My grace is sufficient for you because in your weakness I'm made strong. I'll tell you what, amen, when I think about that, when I am weak, he is strong. When I'm down and out, he knows what's going on. Oh, man, somebody told me many times that I tell you now, I'm not going to take the shot out. Think about prayers, folks. Think about God's sovereignty. God has it actually. What he's doing is weaving through the stories of the Bible. His plan was all written out all the way through it. Our understanding of what God is doing, many times we're wrestling with God in the spirit. We see the smaller picture. God sees the bigger picture. We see it a little bit. God sees the whole thing. So when we're praying, maybe you haven't had an answer yet. But what God is doing is he's planning something out in your life. Now, it's really hard for us to understand when we're praying for something from the heart. Maybe you lost a loved one. Anybody ever lost a loved one? You're praying for somebody that's sick and they're not getting better. You lost a loved one and that's the mystery of God. And we're thinking, God, do something here. I'm hurting here. Lord, don't you understand? You know what? I don't know all the mysteries. I don't know that. But I do want know one thing. That many times God is working something out in us. 
We may not like what we're going through. And what I want to look at real quick is your relationship matters to God. Your relationship matters to God. Go to Mark chapter 11, verse 24 through 26. The Bible says, therefore I said to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. That's a good place right there to say amen. Oh, Lord, I prayed about it, and I'm going to receive it. And you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against God, here's what the other part you have to listen to. Whenever you stand praying, if you have another anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. You know what this is talking about. It's talking about relationship and forgiveness. For some of you, I just dropped a dime on you right there. You're like, you, you, you mean, what do you mean, forgive? Because if you need to get it right with God, you need to forgive. You say, well, preacher, amen, I've heard, Pastor Tom, I'm broken, I'm angry, I don't like this. And God says, work out your relationships. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. It's talking about your wife. Giving honor to your wife as the weaker vessel. My wife always says that. Honey, I'm the weaker vessel. <laughs> I got to humble myself. And, and he said here, so look at husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to your wife as the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life. Now listen to this that your prayers may not be hindered. I know this is talking about a husband and wife relationship, but it's really talking about not only marriage, but people in general, how are your relationships with people. And so, number two, so we need to have our relationships brought, brought back in. Number two is your motives matter to God. In, in James chapter 4 verse 3, it says, You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. How many ever prayed a selfish prayer? Come on. Come on, somebody. You, you know the me first syndrome that I'm talking about? Me, 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 me. We live in a me society. Me first. So you're asking God for pleasures, and God says, you know what, you know what, you think I'm a genie in the bottle, you pull out that magic bottle, you start rubbing it and ask me for, you, you want me to grant your wish, you're, you're like a vending machine dog where I put my money in and pick out exactly what I want, and it pops out. And so can you see God, if God, uh, you know God, I want a hundred dollars, and all of a sudden, boom, he gives you a hundred dollars, and in your mind, you say, oh, inflation, can I have another hundred? <laughs> Can I tell you something? God doesn't work that way. We have it all wrong. God says forgive. Put others first. Amen. And it's not always about you. Amen. God wants to give to you, but He wants you to learn the lesson in prayer. Amen. That you know what? He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. See, sometimes God says no for a reason. Yes. That is to teach us a valuable lesson. If you have kids that are fighting, and, and we, you know, my grandsons are really young, but that the one that's older, when he's starting to pick on his little brother. And, and you know, how many know sometimes siblings have rivalry? Oh, yeah. and, and so, you know, he's all not even one years old yet, and so we, we got to kind of keep an eye on what's going on. But how many know when your kids are fighting, and, you know, 15, later, you're driving down the road, you know, you're just going, you're, you're, you're upset at those kids, they won't shut up, you're back there, be quiet, you can stop fighting, and you know, if they ask you, hey, Dad, can you take us to get us an ice cream? You're like, huh? Ice cream? <laughs> Not until you start getting along. And it's the same thing with God's people, Amen. Oh, God, do this for me. Well, you know, wait a minute now. Come on. You, you need to get along. Right. You need to be in that relationship. You need to allow something to happen. Amen. And I'm not going to do it until you get things right with that individual that you have bitterness with. 
So the whole point is, and what we're getting to is, is our relationship with God matters first. Say amen or oh me, or oh my. Poke your dinner in the rib. Say he's talking about you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So if we always got what we always asked for, you know what type of relationship it would really be? A transactional relationship. You think you can just go up to God, amen, and it's a transactional. Like you stick your card in, you put your code in, and out comes your money. Amen, it's transactional, God. Can I tell you something? A transactional relationship isn't a relationship. Yes, we want God to do things in our life, but it's a two-way thing. If there are things that God is asking of us, and then many times you have unanswered prayer because you're not listening to what God's Word says. See, God wants a relationship with us, but it's not a transactional relationship. It is a loving relationship. Amen. It, is, it, 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 it goes back and forth. James goes on to say it. You asked Consume it on yourself. Your motive matters. And how many have ever done that? Let's just be honest. How many said, God, do this for me? God, do that for me. Huh? Turn the corner. The horn's hot up. Hey, I thought it was just me. Amen. It's not all transactional. It's relational. That's another one. So your motives matter. And lastly, today, is God's will matters most. Amen. 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 We begin to think of what matters to God, our relationship matters, our motives matter, but also God's will matters. Yes. First John chapter 5, verse 14 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked Him for. So the real question is today to ask ourselves is not what I can get, what I want, some transactional relationship, but does what I'm asking fit into the will of God? That's what it should be. Is what I'm asking, does it fit into the will of God? If it does, then God will bless you. I guarantee if you will pray God's will, how many of you know God has a permissive will and God's perfect will? And so God might permit you, but how many know you'll never live in the fullness of God if you always live in the permissive will of God? God will let you do things, amen. But when you're in the perfect will of God, amen, it is something wonderful. Amen. I guarantee if you pray for God's will, amen, that God will bring it to you. You may have to toil a little bit. You may have to pray and wrestle a little bit, amen, because God's teaching you something. But at the end, if you're in God's will, God is going to bring it the blessing into your life. Can someone say amen? The Lord so, I ask you this. Are you living your best life in prayer? I, uh, so cute, my little grandson, they live with us, two of them. And we pray, and he's two years old. And when we pray over our food, we say, in Jesus' name, Anybody say that at the end? Yes. He ends it. He says, Amen. It's a taught thing. It's taught. He sees it. Our Heavenly Father sees you. He wants a relationship with you today. He wants to touch your lives today. Can you bow your heads? With every head bowed and every eye closed, I know it's been really human lately. I know you're ready for the fall, the fall of the pumpkin spice.